and welcome back to the Touchline Talk Show. So here we go. One more game. The granddaddy of them all, if you will. Champions League final. Liverpool, Real Madrid. Of course, these two teams have history. It's why Mo Salah, when asked before if he wanted City or Real Madrid, said he wanted Real Madrid. So let's start by going back to that game. Your players still on Liverpool who started. Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino, Mo Salah, Jordan Henderson, James Milner, Andy Robinson, Virgil van Dijk, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Their entire bench is no longer with the club. There's been a little bit of turnover. For Real Madrid, Karim Benzema, Isco, Tony Cruz, Casemiro, Luka Modric, Marcelo, and Danny Carvajal started. Nacho, Gareth Bale, Marco Asensio came on off the bench. Lucas Vasquez was among the substitutes but did not feature. Those are your players who actually have history in this game that were there 2018. If you don't remember what happened in that game, you had the Sergio Ramos incident that led to Mo Salah having to leave with the, the shoulder injury. That was a zero, no, no game. The scoring started when Loris Karius threw the ball more or less at Kareem Benzema and just sort of asked him to put it into the net. That was the, this was the game with the goalkeeping mistakes. That was the first one. Four minutes later though, Sadio Mane gets on the end of what started from a Liverpool corner to equalize and it's game on. You think, okay, Liverpool are back in this. Then Gareth Bale comes on, and Gareth Bale has his bicycle kick to put Real Madrid back up. Remember that, that I mean, it's the best goal of his career. That, again, was this game against Liverpool. And then you had his shot from, I mean, it must have been 40 yards, maybe 35, but from way out there that hits Karius in the hands, and just kind of goes through his hands and into the net to seal the deal late for Real Madrid. This was the we need to go get Allison game. And so Liverpool come back, get that next opportunity against Spurs, and get their Champions League title. In that game, because there are so many players who were involved in it that are still factors in this game and key players in this game, I do think there is some value to sort of looking at how that game went. Real Madrid had 61% of the possession and completed more than twice as many passes as Liverpool. Not quite sure that's going to happen again. This was still Liverpool trying to figure out who they were. They have certainly done that now. Both teams had 12 shots, but Real Madrid had a 5-2 edge with shots on target. It was certainly lopsided and Real Madrid were deserving it. The big what if is, of course, what happens if Mo Salah doesn't have to leave the game. Who knows? I would still argue this was Liverpool learning what it takes to get to that point. Of course, these, these Real Madrid guys are so battle-tested, even by 2018, that they are they are the standard. you got to do something to unseat them. It's a little bit different this time around. The matchups I'm looking for here. A couple in particular. First of all, it's the midfield. I've been harping on this since we had that series of shaky performances by the Liverpool midfield, both domestically and in against Villarreal where they just were not able to influence the game. They were non-factors. And then sort of would come to life. But there were there were long stretches of time where you were just wondering what what is going on here. And I specifically said if that I believe I don't remember which game it was, but if that Liverpool midfield is not better they're going to be in big trouble 
against either of the teams on the other side of the Champions League bracket. Because that's Luka Modric, Tony Cruz, and Casemiro with Edward Camavinga coming off the bench. They will absolutely expose you if you can't dictate the terms of the game. And if you can't get your high press going. And that's why this is this in particular with the midfield is so important to Liverpool. It's because everything they do is built on the high press, the forcing turnovers, the rhythm, disrupting the other team's rhythm. Right? This this is not a midfield that is built to have sort of these a Kevin De Bruyne type in it. You've got your holding, more of your traditional holding midfielder and Fabinho, and then a bunch of guys who are just sort of box-to-box, high energy, really good passers. I mean, Thiago is not exactly high energy when it comes to, to pressing, but you get the point. They, they are excellent at getting into transition. And then you have the other part of this where you throw Thiago in the mix, and now all of a sudden you have a guy who can break apart a defense with his passing too. And... On that front, we will have to see if he, what the injury status ends up being there. Klopp seems optimistic. He's going to try to give it a go in terms of trying to make at least the, the bench and be available for the game. We'll see if it actually happens, but he has not been ruled out yet. And it, the news seems to be getting better, not worse. So if you could, I mean, even if you could just have him for 20 minutes off the bench in a tie game like, he is, he is so special, that could absolutely be the difference. And if he is not in the starting lineup, then who, who replaces him? You would probably think it's Jordan Henderson, and it's some, and maybe a Nabi Keita in there. We'll have to, we'll have to see what Klopp does, because he's kind of got his, you know, his preferred setup, and that includes Thiago. So... But on the other injury fronts, it seems like everybody is good to go. They were just playing it as cautious as possible. Van Dyke, Salah should be fit from the start in this one. It's what it appears. And then the other part of this midfield battle is, can one of the two midfields be create the decisive moment of the game? The way Luka Modric did with that pass against Chelsea. The way Thiago absolutely can with his passing. And sp- and more for Liverpool, can you stop Real Madrid's midfield from being the difference in the game? Because Benzema absolutely can be the difference of the game. As can whatever combination of three attackers you would have to think it's Salamane and Diaz. Klopp throws out there. Liverpool have more difference makers in the in that front three. And Vinicius Vinicius is the other one. We'll get to him in a minute. But you there is more from a, a playmaking standpoint, there is much more asked of Real Madrid because you have a 10 in Luka Modric who does those kind of things. Again, Liverpool, right, it's so much based off of turnovers and high pressing. And certainly Real Madrid have have some of that too, but it is not drilled into the DNA of these players in the, this club the way it is Liverpool. So are we going to look back on this game and say Liverpool got overran in midfield, Modric was brilliant, or you know Casemiro really, really screened that back line well and did his thing where he gets really close to a bunch of yellow cards and really bothered Liverpool's attack and they just couldn't get connected with the midfield? Are we talking about Casemiro getting sent off? This could go different directions. But to me, any Real Madrid win starts with winning the midfield battle. And it's sort of true for Liverpool as well, but it's more just mitigating any potential advantage from Real Madrid there. So now we get to the other part. The individual matchup that is potentially the most, uh, the most important and arguably the most intriguing, is Vinicius and Trent Alexander-Arnold. 
I have given my whole spiel about how important it is for Liverpool that they they have possession of, and that's the other part of their midfield thing too, is can you hold on to the ball? They have possession of the ball because it allows their, their fullbacks to get forward and do the things they do best. And it creates a whole new dimension to Liverpool's attack when you've got Alexander-Arnold and Robinson playing in crosses. And the ability to get them into you know scoring areas. Robertson's really good at making those diagonal runs. You see so much of that, you know, Alexander Arnold to Robertson passing. That kind of stuff doesn't happen if they're getting pinned back. You saw what Vinicius did to poor Fernandinho. Now, Alexander Arnold is in much in a much better place physically, athletically to deal with Vinicius than Fernandinho was. But this is also a trend Alexander Alexander Arnold who has struggled defensively at times. Which one is going to show up? The one who looked real shaky in the first half of that second leg against Villarreal, or the one who was absolutely brilliant in the FA Cup final? That is a huge question. Because if he falls asleep at that post, and he is not staying between Vinicius and the ball, that is huge trouble for Liverpool. Huge trouble. And it has happened. Villarreal showed you how to do it. And Vinicius is the kind of player that can burn you alive doing it. Absolutely expose you. On the other hand, if the midfield can keep Modric in check, and if Alexander Arnold could be found fundamentally sound defensively and not make any of those mistakes that allow Vinicius to get on the end of anything, now you're in a tough spot if you're Real Madrid and trying to get service to Benzema. Now, of course, all he needs is one change. He's in terrific form. He's as good as any player in the world at the moment. But some of that is predicated on Modric setting him up, the wingers getting involved. Right, he he is much more of a a true finisher, a pure nine, than a Harry Kane type who's going to drop in and can lead the Premier League in assists. Benzema can get isolated on an island if and we've seen in the Champions League, if he's not getting the service, if if Real Madrid is not clicking and the, the there's a lack of continuity between the different pieces. So to me, that's what this is going to come down to. If Real Madrid can hold on to the ball because Liverpool's midfield is shaky and they can't connect passes and they're struggling when they get pressed, and all of a sudden Alexander-Arnold is playing deep and Robertson are playing defense and not able to get forward, absolutely, I'll take my chances with Vinicius and Benzema for Real Madrid to win that game. It's, it's a tough task, though. These guys have, of course, been there before. They have the magic of this tournament. And I all it's it's an interesting psychological question if you're Liverpool too, of how does how do the events of Sunday impact this game? Of course, you would want to say the answer is they don't at all, but they're humans. Are they? Do they come out a little bit lethargic because they were that close to being playing for a quadruple? Or are they so disappointed they came that close they are determined to make sure they don't let this one slip away too? This is... I don't want to say it's a different level for, for Real Madrid because that is disrespectful to Manchester City. I do believe this is a stiffer challenge because Liverpool are more comfortable playing in the chaos. A lot of what they do is trying to create it. And they also have the ability to pick you apart if you just sit back. right? They get into those modes where it just feels inevitable a goal is coming. 
You have to find a way to disrupt them. But they don't need everything to go right in order to make it happen. And a perfect example was the Wolves game. They weren't good, but they found a way. And so to me, that's what makes this challenge. If I'm Real Madrid, and I'm a Real Madrid fan, I do feel this is a different level of challenge for in this particular matchup. This isn't a Liverpool-Manchester City thing. This is a, for a team that's as battle-tested as Real Madrid, playing a team that is so system-oriented and so programmed, if you can find, right, they've got that ability to find the way to wreck havoc for 30 minutes and come with a flurry of goals, that's not going to phase Liverpool the same way. And it won't snowball as much. That was one of the shocking things to me about that first half with in the Villarreal game was you don't usually see it snowball like that on Liverpool, right? One led to two, and they, I mean, they couldn't get out of it for 45 minutes. But also they have the ability to turn the script around in the second half because they're, Klopp's a great in-game adjuster and they're an all-time great team. So I'm going with Liverpool when it's all said and done. I expect them to do this. I also believe that I'm a big advocate of the difficulty in repeating and the the extra motivation that comes from coming so close and then losing. I don't believe it's because anybody doesn't care as much if you didn't lose the, the season before. I believe there's something you can just draw from, this extra ounce of motivation if you lose in a Champions League final, for example. It's part of what made Real Madrid's ability to do this year after year so incredible is they never lost that drive and never lost that edge. And it's really easy to. So this is kind of strange in that sense, too, because... Both of these teams have tasted it. There are plenty of players on this Liverpool team, who, however, who have not. Or haven't done it in Liverpool. And while both these teams have Champions League titles, I do think it says something that Salah publicly declared he wanted another shot at Real Madrid. And maybe it's just him personally because of how that game went. But you, if you're Real Madrid, you don't want to be giving Liverpool any extra edge. Your, your task is difficult, difficult enough already. And it just so happens you beat them the last time in somewhat humiliating fashion just because of the way the goals were conceded, not the performance overall. But... You, you better believe that stuck in some guys' minds, particularly Mo Salah. And then there's also the, what happens with Salah and Mane is, is Mo Salah. Now, he he did say in the lead-up to this game he's going to be at Liverpool next season no matter what happens contract-wise. For what that's worth, probably it means a great deal. I just, I'm always taking everything with a grain of salt because that's just the way this sport works when it comes to transfers. But, is is this a potential audition for a eventual move to Real Madrid? Not that he needs to prove anything, but there's there are plenty of intriguing storylines surrounding this outside of just these two great teams, these two teams that have really become synonymous with this trophy in this tournament. So we will see how it all plays out, but again... I'm, I'm going with Liverpool. I've been against Real Madrid, the, not the entire way, but specifically in the semifinals. So, got to keep doing it. <laughs> if they pull this off, I will have completely learn my lesson. I, I certainly admitted a little oversight and, and gave them credit for what they did against Manchester City in terms of proving they are back in the elite tier of the sport. I still feel they're they're a tick below Manchester City and Liverpool, which I'm sure most people agree with me on that. But they are, it's Real Madrid, it's the Champions League. One game, we'll see what happens. 
Enjoy the Champions League final. Enjoy the championship playoff final, both happening this weekend. That is all for our show today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll be back after the Champions League. We'll do a recap video, match report for the game. So there'll be no Monday weekend roundup. We're going to sort of do that as a Champions League recap instead. So be on the lookout for that after the game on Saturday. That's all we've got, and we will see you next time.